Hey there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now yesterday's video was about the new Cortex A78 and the Cortex X1. They are CPU designs from ARM. And today's video is about two new GPUs from ARM, the Mali G78 and the Mali G68. So if you wanna find out more, please let me explain. So the Mali G78 is the second generation Valhall GPU from ARM and of course a successor to the Mali G77 and of course it offers improvements in both performance and in energy efficiency and the Mali G68 is a whole brand new GPU that ARM have announced and we'll talk more about that towards the end of the video. Now the Mali G78 is basically an improvement and an upgrade from the G77 and if you want a big number just there for you to grab hold of it is 25% it's 25% faster than the Mali G77 if you include the change from seven nanometer to five nanometer and you include the uh, changes to the microarchitecture that come in the Mali G78. So let's break down those numbers a bit. First of all, the G78 has a 15% higher performance density compared to the G77. And that is if you ignore the move from seven nanometer to five nanometer, this is on both of them being equal, then the G78 offers 15% greater performance density compared to the G77. What does that mean? That means that in a smaller amount of silicon, you can get the same performance, which you can then use that silicon which you can use that power, you can use that cost to add greater performance to a G78 GPU. And likewise, it has a 10% better energy efficiency and there's a 15% uh, uplift in machine learning performance. So there are three major changes to the G78 compared to the G77. First of all, there is support for 24 shader cores. And of course the move to five nanometer gives some extra leeway there in terms of what could be added to the processor and the energy efficiency that's coming out. And those can be used, those gains can be used to add in more shader cores. Secondly, there is the asynchronous top level. And we'll talk more about that in a moment. And thirdly, there is a brand new FMA that's a fused multiply add. And we'll talk a bit about that in a moment moment as well. In all areas of computing there are two major aspects to performance. One is the actual raw performance of the calculations that are made and the second is the input and output to how quickly can you get the data there and how quickly can you get the data back to where it needs to go. And of course if you have a slow uh, bandwidth a bottleneck appears because you're not getting the data through it doesn't matter how fast your processing is the overall system performance is going to be low and in the you can have a huge pipe, a huge way of getting the data in and then if you have low performance for the actual crunching, the number crunching, then again you get an overall slow performance. So of course you want the wide bandwidth and you want high performance and this is where the asynchronous top level changes come in. So the way Mali GPUs have been designed till now, the kind of the input, the bit that feeds the shader cores, runs at the same frequency as the shader cores themselves. And that means that sometimes you get a problem where the shader cores aren't getting enough work to do and they have to hang around and wait because it's all within one clock frequency domain. Now asynchronous top level ensures that the performance is delivered effectively and efficiently across all the cores. And the example that ARM give here is that the kind of the input to the shader cores, the top level bit, is running at twice the clock frequency of the actual shader cores themselves. So by decoupling the top level stuff with the shader cores you can get some significant increases in performance and here there is a graph showing the different performance increases that can be gained by employing asynchronous top level inside of the GPU design. And it will be up to the OEMs who use this GPU inside of their processors what frequency they want to run the top level at, what frequency they want to run the shader cores at, and try to get that best combination for throughput, for bandwidth, and yet also for power efficiency, and they can tune it according to their needs. Another area where the G78 has, has focused on improving performance is in complex gaming scenes where there are smoke, grass and trees and using a new technology called fragment dependency tracking the Mali G78 is able to achieve anything from a 5 to 17 percent improvement in these kind of complex game scenes. We also need to talk a little bit about a Tyler. Now inside a mobile GPU if you think about how big an actual full HD or even a quad HD frame is 
in three color channels, maybe some transparency as well, depth information. That's a very big chunk of uh, memory. And of course you can do it by reading and writing that memory from the DRAM, but in terms of gaming performance, that's a slow thing to do. So it's better to have fast RAM that's on board, right tightly coupled to the GPU, and you're able to process the scene in that memory. But that memory is limited. So you have this idea of tiling, where the overall scene is split up into smaller tiles that are worked on by the GPU in that localized faster memory and then written out to the DRAM, then the next tile is processed and so forth. Now why am I saying that? Because there have been some improvements to the tiler inside the G78. So going back to this thing of the smoke, grass and tree scenes, uh, the shader cores can be underutilized because there is so many uh, triangles, huge number of triangles that need to be processed by the tiler. So by increasing the clock frequency of the tiler, you can get large performance gains with only actually small increases in the energy required. And that's what they've done with the Mali G78. Now here is an, an overall look of the technical specifications of the Mali G78. We can see here it supports anything from seven shader cores uh, up to 24 shader cores, depending on the requirements of the OEM who is building their mobile processor with this in it. You've got a new FMA unit we'll talk about in a moment, upgraded Tyler, better cache management and so on. So let's talk about the FMA. Fuse Multiply Add is really a key part of GPUs, not only for gaming, but also for machine learning. It can basically do a multiply and an add in kind of one operation, and then you have this result. It's a fused multiply add, and you use this all the time with matrix multiplications and all this kind of stuff. And of course, the faster you can make that, the more efficient you can make that fundamental unit, that fundamental thing that happens in the GPU, then of course that affects the overall performance of everything in the GPU. Now they've rewritten the FMA uh, inside the G78 from the ground up and I asked the question to the engineers, I said well surely there's only so many ways you can you can add and multiply. I, I thought it was like you know we, we, we cracked that with the Greeks you know this is not but apparently there are lots and lots of techniques in terms of implementing this in silicon that can have an impact in terms of performance and in terms of energy usage and they've used a new design to try to bring out the best performance with using less energy. And so this combination of the asynchronous top level, or the top level is decoupled from the frequency domain of the GPU shaded cores and the new FMA. The idea is, of course, we get longer battery life uh, and, of course, our smartphones are able to help uh, play games for longer without using as much energy. Now, just as ARM announced two CPU cores, ARM have also announced two GPUs. So we had the GPU G78, the second generation of Valhalla. And now they're introducing a new sub-brand, which is the sub-premium brand, which is the Mali G68. So this new sub-premium brand goes between the Mali G5, G57, for example, and the G7, the G77, the G78, and now this is the Mali G68. Now, the idea of the Mali G68, it takes all the features of the G78, but it gives you less cores. So basically, the idea is the Mali G68 has all the same features as the Mali G78, the new FMA, the improvements of the Tyler, the asynchronous top level decoupling. However, it's limited to just six shader cores, therefore putting it into the sub premium market. Now, in the future, newer GPUs in this range may diverge from the uh, ones in the premium uh, level. However, the idea is they always keep the same features. However, there may be other differences. But for this first generation of this sub-premium brand, it's basically a G78, but with less shader cores. And that leaves us with the question of when and who. The when is easy, it would be available for partners to roll out in the 2021 mobile processors. The who, that we're going to have to wait and see. Arm traditional partners, Samsung, Huawei and MediaTek, all have their own individual different uh, problems and roadmaps at the moment. Huawei, of course, is having problems with the whole American administration. Samsung, will they continue with the uh, G78 in its next iteration or will it have now moved to uh, a GPU by AMD? MediaTek sometimes goes with uh, Mali, sometimes goes with uh, Imagination. So it's gonna be interesting to see which mobile processors are gonna be using the Mali G78 in 2021. 
Okay, that's it. My name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. If you like these kind of videos, why not stick around by subscribing to the channel? Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.